This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the LA 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming the gorgeous, the talented, the sexy, Leslie Ryan. Leslie and I, we've been going back and forth for almost 18 months about uh, doing this interview. She was in such classics as Give Me an F, Night of the Creeps. She was in um, Jim Wynorski's 976 Evil and several of his other movies like uh, Body Chemistry 4, The Assault. Um, she guest starred on Highway to Heaven, T.J. Hooker, Charles in Charge. She's got so many great credits. She was on the soap opera Santa Barbara. And we're going to talk about all that stuff today. Yeah, she was really nervous about doing this interview, but luckily she said yes after a while. And I cannot wait. I am so excited. And it's going to be a great interview today. We're going to kick off Sexy May in style. And also, too, happy birthday to my niece Olivia. I love you, honey. She turns 11. I can't believe the time has gone. I remember holding her in my arms when she was only a few months old. It's gone by so quick. So, happy birthday, Olivia. So, yeah, here is my interview with Leslie Ryan. Hello. Hey, Leslie, welcome to the show. How are you today? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, uh, I'm all cleaned up just for you. <laughs> this is such a great honor. Thank you so much for finally taking the time today. <laughs> I know what's been five years. I don't even know. 18 months. I, I ghosted you. It's been, I ghosted you. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's been, I was it's, too nervous. It's been 18 months, but it's okay. Oh, has it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, going back in time, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Mm. No, I did not. I was, uh, I came from a musical family. Father is a, a very, very uh, talented uh, professional musician. He toured with Eric Burton and the Animals and oh. his own band and, uh, you know, ah, da, 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 da. my mom, even she was a showgirl. She learned to play bass. She was in an all-girl band and she became a real estate agent. But they put me through dance school and I was had really excelled at dancing and that sort of thing. And then, uh, as such, you know, a broken family, that kind of thing. But yeah. I ended up moving to California with the boyfriend and the band. The nice. band. To Los Angeles at 19. And uh, I went to the Fashion Institute for Design and Merchandising, thinking that would be the direction. Or maybe I thought I'd be a, a recording engineer like my boyfriend. But you mm. can't follow in your boyfriend's footsteps. So that's why I decided maybe the Fashion Institute. And... Uh, but I took up dance classes there because one of the other girls, uh, she was the guitar player's wife. She was a dancer as well. So we started studying dance together and, mm -hmm. um, you know, really got into it again because that was a, a love of mine and I was good at it. Well, um, crazy as it would be, uh, you know, MTV was just starting and um, some people had come to look at our dance class and was peering in through the back what you know the opening and uh they kind of looked at me and, and kind of said hey you know like waved to me like come like come to us after the the class and i was like what yeah. so i went up i think i was about maybe just turning 21 i moved out there when i was 19 so that would be like 1980 uh -huh. and uh they said we'd like you to audition for a music video. I didn't even know what they were talking about. I said, a music video? They said, yeah, it's for the group called The Cars. And I'm like, well, I knew who they were. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and they said, it's a, a song called Shake It Up, and we'd like for you to come. And so I went, and, like, everybody was there, you know. You know, I'm not thinking anything. Like, I mean, these there's, like, everybody in town's there. And uh, so um, – I, uh, I went and, uh, well, they, they asked me to do it. So I did that. And uh, that was the first time I'd ever stayed up all night and, like, yeah. you know, found out what a close up was. And it was like the last shot of the night at five or six o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, well, shouldn't they do that at the beginning when you're, like, awake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and fresh? 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, um, a, a couple of weeks later, they asked me to be in a Rick Springfield video uh-huh. and uh, Don't Talk to Strangers. And I was like the girl in that. Oh. And then MTV took off. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm like all, all over the place with that. And, you know, I like that's kind of how things started. But really, I was still like, you know. Uh, going to the Fashion Institute, living with my boyfriend at home with his mom. Like, yeah. I hadn't even gotten into an apartment situation. And, and then what happened was, like, uh, we got a call, the dance studio, uh, from a casting director because they were just starting to do dancing in commercials. Mm-hmm. You remember, I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, that type yeah. of thing. If I don't know if you're that, if, if you're younger or oh, older no. than me. I remember okay, that. Okay, well, that was like the first one. So they said, you know, hey, send down about six of your most commercial looking like dancers for this uh, Sprite International uh, commercial. And I, and they sent me down and I went with a few of my friends. And, you know, there must have been 150 friggin' dancers. I'm like, there's no way, you know. Yeah. It's like, so I, I, you know, did the audition. It was an all day deal. And then, you know, it's like the hardest choreographer ever and choreography and like, what the hell? You know, just, and I got a call back and you know what? That mm-hmm. I booked the dance thing. I got the job. I was like, what? Ooh. And so, yeah, yeah. I mean, when they called me and said you had a call back, I'm like, well, what do I do? They said, well, you don't have a headshot. I didn't even know what a headshot was or an agent or, you know, they said, just wear what you wore. I said, well, what do I wear? Wear what you wore before. Yeah. So I booked that. And then two weeks later, uh, a Whopper's Candy, they, they had me come in for that. And I booked that. And it was outside of 30 days. And when you're with a union and you don't, you're not in the union, they have to do what's called a Taft-Hartley. And that's uh, what the uh, the directors and the, they'll do for you, the producers, to, to allow you to do the job. And if you book a job outside of that 30 days, then you're a must join. And it was $675. Wow. I didn't even have that. I was at that time I was working at Marie calendars. Okay. I was mm-hmm. like, you know, <laughs> I, wa- I like barely had a car. I was still working. You know, my car had broke down. So I was like walking to work and, you know, so it was like, I had to ask a friend to loan me the money. You know? like, <laughs> so I paid to get in the union. And of course, once I, I started getting a residual check or the first payment, I paid him back. And uh, so um, anyway, from there, you know, I I get this call from this big time casting director. I call her my angel. Um, She she called me and said, so so what's going on with you? I'm like, "Uh, well, and at that time, I I couldn't get into a second year of uh, the Fashion Institute because Ronald Reagan was the president. And I don't not to dog anybody, but, you know, you had to be dirt poor to get it to get any kind of a grant to go to school. And so I couldn't right. get a second year grant. So I went to college, you know, sort of a junior college. And I said, well, I'm just working at you know, Marie Calendars. And going to the, well, you know, you've got such great energy. You could be doing national commercials. And so next thing you know, it was like, she said, well, let me set you up. She goes, cause you don't have headshots. I don't have headshots. I don't know. I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. So she calls me back. She goes, I'm just going to set you up with the, uh, an agency called Wilhelmina. And I'm like, I go, uh, are they any good? She's like, well, they're the one of the top three. And I said, <laughs> okay. So I went in and they like just said, do you have any, any pictures? I had one little role, like film strip. Cause back then that's all, you remember the strips of film? Like, oh yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just in a, in a, in a, in a cover, yeah. you know, um, like, yeah, it looked like the, uh, yeah, you would print the picture off of that. I think that's what they, I don't even know what they call it now, but, um, so I went in with that. It was from a, a hair salon. I did a pictures for a hair salon. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, you know what? We love you. And they ripped off, off the fax machine. Here's an audition for tomorrow. And, uh, you know, go to this. We'd like to sign you. And I'm like, okay, are you good? Are you, who are, yeah, we're the top. Th-. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I booked that job. And it just, I don't know what happened. I became like their top three booker in commercials. Then they signed me to their theatrical department, and then I just took off. I started booking tons of, like, commercials left and right. I mean, I went from, like, making nothing to, like, like I don't even want to say, like, three, like 100 grand a year. Like, I mean, I just, I didn't even know what was going on. It was, it was happening so fast. Um, I, and I, 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 so I started doing the acting thing and that's where I did my first film mm-hmm. to give me an F, which I think you, you might want to ask me about. Maybe I should let you start asking me questions, but that's how it all <laughs> happened. And, I, and so, you know, it was the, the, this, this, my teachers at the college said, you know what, 
you know, because every day, every week, I'm like, well, I have an audition. I have a callback. I have a, they said, you know what, Leslie? You know, it looks like things are going a different direction for you. And, mm. uh, you know, um, you have A's so far. If you want to come back in the summer and take your exams, you know, yeah. you can do that. But so that's when I started studying acting. And so that's really what happened. No, I didn't come to L.A. to do it. I came there for my boyfriend and the band. And, you know, and uh, that's so I, I it, it literally just sort of was obviously the direction that the higher powers that be must have meant for me to be in. But yeah. it's because my parents, it is because my parents put me in dance school. Thank you, God. And thank you to them. Thank you to them. Because that was the springboard into my acting career. So... Are, are you anyway? Sure? Now it's your turn. Now that I took you hostage, <laughs> I took you total hostage. <laughs> are you I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> you asked the question. Are, are you trained in all types of dancing? Uh, yeah, I was trained in jazz, uh, point, ballet, uh, a little bit of tap, and you know it was before hip hop, uh, all that kind of stuff. I yeah. wasn't. I kind of and because. Um, I found that, uh, you know, dancing wasn't going to be the direction for me. Acting really was what I wanted. You know, once I did the film, I got the itch. And then I started doing guest stars on Charles and Charles. I would have it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I tested three times for soaps over in New York. I almost got them. But I did do Santa Barbara for quite quite some time. And, right. You know, um, and I did Young and the Restless with you-know-who, Ken Oland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was the date rapist. It was a storyline that lasted <laughs> eight months. And I was... I was the final girl they found that he raped. Yeah. But I'm sure, he, yeah, you know, uh, this guy got an interesting story with him. So, oh, but we'll, go we'll, on. So. We'll, we'll get into him. But I'm, I'm Are, curious, uh, who was your acting teacher? Oh, gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, gosh, I wish I had my. Um, Jeremiah Comey was one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I went to uh, Theater West, which, uh, uh, what's his name, taught. Um, he was in all the Jurassic Parks. The. Uh, Oh gosh! I the, you know, yeah, he wears the dark rim glasses. He's in all the commercials. He taught there for a while. I'm, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, uh -huh. um, uh, uh, Scott. Oh gosh, I can't do. You know, I don't have my resumes in front of me for all my my brain. It's been forty years. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, Playhouse West was a big uh, studio, and Jeremiah Comey. I studied under him, and then uh, a woman that I studied with that was really. Uh, she was uh, big. She's she, a lot of her. I can't even think of her name. Peggy Sharon, Fury. Sharon. Huh? Peggy Fury. Not Peggy Fury. No, I didn't. That's no, I didn't set me under her. I didn't. Um, you know what? I'd have to go find my resume, and I didn't. I apologize. It's okay. Um, I I studied under a lot of teachers uh, that were good. And were you thinking um, of Richard Dennis, Attenborough? Dennis Berkeley. Dennis Berkeley. Uh -huh. Um, he. He uh, he was on Sanford and Son for many years. Yeah, he was always he a did, biker. He was a big guy. <laughs> yeah, he did a lot of a lot of uh, films. A lot of yeah. he may not. Yeah, he was in everything. Everything, you know. He was he worked uh, with uh, you know um, the golf movie. What was that? Uh, um, I was doing a commercial in in um, in Texas, uh, Houston. And he was over in uh, the other one place, and so I flew over to see him, and I got to meet everybody. I was in awe. The guy that that uh, produced and did Dances with Wolves. What was his name? Uh, Kevin um, Costner. Yeah, but Kevin Costner. I got to meet him in person. Oh my God! I was just mm -hmm. like, <gasps> you know, because he had just won that Oscar. And um, yeah, Dennis did a lot of work. But Dennis was taught taught acting classes as well. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, he'd bring in you know lots of his really star named actors into class. And so I got to work with a lot of those people too. So. Nice. Um, yeah, so there, yeah, I did study a lot and I was always taking commercial acting or scene study or, but theater, you know, Playhouse West was really big. They had a lot of people, you know, studying there and, um, and that was Meisner, the Meisner technique. Right. Was really, my, it was really my technique. Um, so, uh, which, uh, anyway, so there you go. So you're my third guest from that Highway to Heaven episode. Um, oh my gosh! So Ken, Ken's been on, and Bobby Block, who is now Samantha Paris. Uh, okay. Now here's a funny story for you. Uh, when I interviewed Ken two years ago, um, right. I had interviewed uh, uh, Bobby Block first, 
and I hadn't seen this episode yet, right? So he he thought that Bobby Block played his girlfriend, not you. And so I I went along with it because I hadn't seen it yet. But I wa- I listened to it the other night. I was like, God damn it! Why why didn't I look that up? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. No, it was me. I played his girlfriend. I know. I and know. <laughs> the woman that checked this out, we mm-hmm. got cast together, and I, oh my god, working with um with uh. <sighs> Uh, what's his name? Who Michael directed? Landon. Oh my, Michael! Oh my God! Yeah. He was in on the call. He was in on the callback, and he sat. He sat behind the cast director and watched you talk about nervous, you know. And it was the most emotional scene, of course. Yeah. You know, and I was crying in the scene. He came over and he held me. He's like, "Well, I said sorry." He goes, "No, no, that's how you should be affected, you know, because the my Ken gets like we get in this. He gets in this accident, and becomes paralyzed, and blah 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 blah. Right. I'm the cheerleader who like leaves him for whoever because he's you know in a wheelchair." but anyway <laughs> real nice girlfriend but uh anyway um he uh he and i got casted and then the mother that was his mother the three of us get casted several couple years later in the young and the restless episode i told you uh-huh. about him being the date rapist it was an eight month long uh storyline you know how uh, soap operas like to take current issues and affairs in the news and then they incorporate them in the storylines you yeah. know how soap operas are they do that yeah well at that time date rape was a big issue you know big storyline mm-hmm. in the news and so uh uh yeah so ken Owen is is the guy that's date raping all these women and so <laughs> and they can't they can't really get get him get him nailed down and then lo and behold they find out there's me you know at the end like they come and and they try to come and get me at the dorm and i don't want to do it and then, and then, and then i finally admit to it and it's all like you know uh, all the back and forth you know on, on the uh witness stand you know the prosecuting and then the defense and the back and forth and i'm crying and then i have to tell exactly what happened detailed by detail you know yeah. so it's my <laughs> and it's my prosecution that like convicts them you know i got actual fan mail and i still kept it written letters like actual written letters back in the day when they wrote letters today they just do everything on phone yeah. but uh, i kept it yeah like people were really like upset about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're so happy that I convicted him but he got cast and the g- woman that was the mother in the highway to heaven was cast as his mother again Shelby the Leverton. three of us yeah. now how weird is that right. then a few years later four more years later after that I think yeah maybe somewhere in there three years we get cast in a time to revenge right. again and right. he's in that movie, and I'm in that movie with him, which um, my fiance David just found online, and we bought the movie because I lost a lot of my stuff through transition of moving back out here, and yeah. it's a long story. My friend uh, who worked at Guitar Center took all my VHSs to his office. He was the head of A and R and was trans, you know, like transposing them from VHS to DVD. And well, he got sick with sick with Alzheimer's. I got sick. I, I had to move out here like last minute. And, and so my stuff got, a lot of my stuff got lost, Tommy. I and I got some is. of my stuff. So I'm trying to, you know, my dad had just said before I decided to do this with you, why don't you start trying to locate your things and, and you know, archive your stuff. Yeah. And I, so I'm starting to put things together. And David, David found last night the assaults. Yeah. On free F R E E V E E T V, and we watched the whole movie. And I I'm did like, too. <laughs> I'm in the whole movie. I'm like, oh my god, there! I, I'm in the movie. Yes, you I'm were. Not seen, <laughs> and there's Jim Wodorski in him in the movie. And I remember he used to like to put himself a little small part. He didn't give himself credit, but I'm like, yeah. Oh my god, there's Jim. He looks so young. I'm like, oh my god, I must be getting old because I used to think he was old when I yeah. first him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh God, I know people have their stories about him, but you know what? He was good to me. He worked me a lot, yeah. you know. And but you know, if you were an actor and you didn't know your lines or your shit, man, he he didn't uh, he didn't have you know um, keep his mouth shut. He would let you know it, and you know, yeah. he, 
yeah, yeah. He was, you know, so you just, you know, you just better know your shit and, you know. But he always had that token girl on the set that was his little, you know, you know, <laughs> something, something. But you know what I said to David? I said, oh, my God, I feel so bad because I kind of told him about the girl, you know. And uh -huh. you know what? I saw her. I'm like, there she is. There she is. Well, she had a pretty good part, and you know what? She did a pretty damn good job. She just always had to have the perfect curls going on, yeah. you know, like, and I'm like, we're like, you saw the movie. I mean, we're like freaking living in, like, gang members are after us, and we're like fighting and shooting, and like, yeah. do you really have perfect ring curls, like, every scene? Like, yeah. But you know what? She was mm. actually pretty good. So I, like, feel bad that I judged her. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> So the guy, so, the guy who directed you in the Cars video, Paul Justman, he directed Give Me an F. So did he just uh, did he consider you for this movie? Yes, he did. He, they loved me. His girlfriend, who was the uh, uh, costume designer, and um, his girlfriend, they they just loved me. They they put me in the Rick Springfield video, and there was another Springfield video that I cannot remember the name, and I was the girl in that. But the the Don't Talk to Strangers is like I'm really the girl in that. You know, mm -hmm. like like and people were like he was big at the time. Like he had the soap opera going. And, oh, he was cute. You know, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, he was so cute! Oh my gosh! Right, you know, yeah. and like, there's one scene like back then, like it's not today. I mean, they're, you know, Nicki Minaj is bending over, grabbing her, you know what, on like on prime time, like TV, yeah. like you know, and uh, what's his name is like covering his eye, kid's eyes, like what the hell, you know, like like, but back then, like he's under the table, like you know, putting his rubbing his hand up my 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 shin, you know, yeah. and if people were like, oh my god, what was that? like to have Rick Springfield touching your leg like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, now you look at today, man, you look at like, you know, these movies like uh, with Game of Thrones. I mean, man, you got to let it all hang out. And I mean, I'll tell you, I was, it was really hard, you know, like it was commercials came so easy for me, my energy and dance and the different things and then tv and soaps and, but film trying to make it in film was so hard in the beginning because you got to build tape on yourself right and you know so you got to do these lower budget things and you know thank god for jim he loved me he worked me a lot so i had several things but like you know i had to do some stuff like you know, okay, got to show your boobs in this thing. You got it. Or you're not, you know, you, you don't get the part, you know, and you're going to. And it was really hard for me because I didn't really want to do that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I wouldn't be able to get, you know, you're trying to get tape on yourself to build a reel. Because you want to, you're trying to get a better agent. And agents want to see your reel. Yeah. Or cast directors for this, a better role in a better film want to see a good a good reel with parts and you know i'm sorry like 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 you said savage land yeah maybe we should just leave that out i mean yeah. look i got like two like two dumbass yeah i mean they're not dumbass but but it's just like i'm just the aunt with a couple of little lines like i mean great you know like what am i going to use for that for my reel you know it's like, <laughs> but like the assault like look i'm all the way through it and look, I didn't even have to take my clothes off. So it was yeah. like, <laughs> but I mean, there are some other little ones that I'm like, well, whatever. I even told my dad, well, you're going to see my boobs in this, the showers and even that one, you know, it's like, but, um, you know, it was never, it was always uncomfortable, you know, it's, and, uh, but now today I look at what people have to do, man, in films, like, man, they got to let it all hang out, you know, it's like, uh, so it's, uh, it was a different world back then, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, so, I'll give you um, I'll give you an anecdote about Give Me an F that it's 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 been out there for a while, but this movie was a tax yeah. this movie was a tax write off movie for Twentieth Century Fox when um, <laughs> when Return of the Jedi made three hundred million dollars at the box office in nineteen eighty three they they decided that they were going to make three teen movies as a tax write off just to you know put them out there and uh -huh. I ironically. This was the one that didn't do well, but the other two were huge box office hits, uh, Bachelor Party and Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, my God. And mine was the third one. Of course it didn't do <laughs> next to those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it had, oh it, it had a, 70, a late 70s vibe to it. You know? It yeah. Was just, it, yeah. Know, it just looked more um, old-fashioned compared it to the totally other two. It totally did. Yeah. It totally did. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like my very first film ever. You know? I yeah. was like... 
so much craziness going on on that set. There were like nine girls that got pregnant on that set that had to have abortion. <laughs> it was like crazy. But like we were like, you know, like I, you know, and the, the, the lead girl, my lead girl was like, you know, coming in late every day. Like, and she, you know, she was drinking and her eyes were red. And like yeah. the, they were like, you know, trying to pull her together and get her face to look right to do the scenes. And she's like supposed to be a duck Christian girl, you know, it's like, <laughs> but, you know, we, you know, it was fun. It was like, I was like, it gave me the itch to want to do it. And that's when I started really, you know, all realizing I needed to study acting. Yeah. So, but yeah. you're right. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't really, but then I got to dance in it. That was like kind of incorporated my dancing ability. Yeah, but, uh, just about every dance member, uh, uh, dance squad member, it, went on to have a career, like Lisa Wilcox and Darcy DeMoss yeah. and Holly Gagnier and Robin Anton, yeah. A, a lot of them did. A lot of them had good careers, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I was just kind of under the almost kind of, you know, almost, yeah. I, I mean, I, I worked. I did, you know, I, I have a pension. I did, you know, I did well. The commercial industry is where I really made my money, you know, mm-hmm. but as far as like, you know, um, you know, I was close on a lot of things. I had 13th Century Artists was a great agency for me. They loved me. And, you know, I was like, all, like me and the other girl for, up for Children of the Corn and she got it. Then oh, it was like <laughs> Sp- Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man, the first one that came out, me and another girl, she got it. It was like. 13 of those back to back to back. You know, and it's, it was, it's really hard to keep your self esteem up. And it's hard in that industry. And when I hit 40, I did one last film. I can't remember if, I think it was Born Champion. David and I are trying to figure out how to see that movie. Yeah. He's like, oh my God, did you know you, that movie, you're, you're, you worked with Pam, because we've been watching a lot of The Office. Uh-huh. And Pam, her, the roller, she's Jenna something. Her name's Pam on the series. He's like, she's in that movie with you. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. have. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like I worked with a lot of people that went on to do things, you know. Yeah. And it's like, it's like I just missed sort of like, you know, but, but you know what? I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. It's like 25 years, you know, there's only 3% of the people that really work in SAG and I did. And, yeah. you know, I, I'm grateful, you know, it's like I did get to work in the commercials. I did over 130 or 40 of them, you know, people like, what kind you know, of things could, did you endorse? Uh, I did everything from full. I was the first person to do the commercial after Mrs. Olson with Folgers uh, coffee commercial. Right. They had her for years. So they did two test commercials and mine like got one out and I made $80,000 on that commercial in like four years. Nice. Yeah, nice. off of one commercial. Yeah, no, I did everything from Coca Cola to, you know, I worked with Ella Fitzgerald in Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's. I mean, I've, wow. I mean, I've done it all. I've done like, yeah, I was the quintessential like girl next door, your counter girl, your, I uh, Link Cuisine. Um, let's see, Burger King, um, beer. I was in. I was. There was a couple times like you could watch the Super Bowl, and I was in two separate commercials through the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and that yeah, and then like you'd be watching, and then they while well, the the halftime they'd go over to MTV, and then you'd see my my uh, you know um, Rick Springfield uh, don't talk to strangers video, <laughs> and I just be like you know, and it was hard because I. I was with a group of musicians that were really talented and they were struggling. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I just, I kind of had to, I kind of shrunk like to hide like my success because I felt bad. Like here, you know, I, out of nowhere, I just like explode with success. And these guys are all like, you know, but I helped everybody a lot more than I probably should have. And, with my money to save their equipment so or their part their house so they wouldn't like get kicked out on the street <laughs> you know but you know oh well you know i made yeah. choices like that that might not have, you know that's just the kind of person i was you know it's like people yeah. sometimes people mistook my kindness for weakness but you know today i'm back here i'm with my family i'm grateful i got to have a relationship with my mother before she passed after you know, for 11 years out here, I met my fiance, who's actually a good human being that doesn't, that I don't have to pay for to, 
to love me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a good job. We bought a house together. You know, so my life is good today, and I have a pension. You know, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I didn't really feel no if I wanted to talk about it because I, my dad always says I, I've never even, I don't talk about myself a lot about what I did, even to people out here. David, David's mm-hmm. like, so what did you do? I said, oh, um, I used to make commercials. He thought I, he, I meant like like produce or something you didn't know i was in it like i really don't talk about myself tommy even when i would get jobs i would be real quiet yeah in california because i felt bad i didn't want people oh she got another job oh she got another job you know because a lot of the girls in the musician the musicians wives and they were kind of jealous because like they didn't book anything and i did and it was non-stop it just really was for about 10 years there you could there was a little like you could go to um uh, what was that place you would go pick up um, plays and uh, you know just if you wanted to get a play? Um, it was a it was a little store, and you could get plays and you could get you know directories about agencies and you get, it was a certain place they called it. Drum a log. Uh, yeah, something like that. But there, yeah. my friend went in and he got a copy of, of agencies. He was looking up looking up different agencies and he found Wilhelmina and the, my name was actually listed as the top one of the top three bookers. I mean, I really, I really like the commercial thing was just really unbelievable for me. You know, and yeah, I did a lot of episodic and stuff like that. I had a lot of fun. The soap opera thing, you know what? Mm. I made that. I made that role. That was just supposed to be a three day thing. And they loved my my acting. I was like sort of the, uh, what was I, the antagonist. But I kind of had a a funny way about it. And they just kept writing me in and writing me in and writing me in. And when I'd come home, I'd see myself in the commercial for the next episode Mm -hmm. i'm like oh they're gonna write they're gonna give me a contract so i it's like about six months later i come in and it's it's a thursday you always you know you work through the week you know uh you know first day is just right reading the lines next day it's like you got to have your lines memorized then it's like third day is blocking fourth day is you know, uh, styling and direction, and then the fourth day is like, the last day. Friday is like two. You know, shoot two two eps two two episodes in front of a live audience, right? Right. So I get there on a Thursday, ready to go, and they call me into the casting direct office, and I'm like, oh, of course they're going to sign me, right? <laughs> they're like, well, we just we have to talk to you, and they preface it with. You know, we just want you to know you've done an amazing job. You know, like they love you. They kept writing you in. I'm like, okay, okay. But then it's like, but we just have to tell you this is the hardest thing that we're going to have to tell you. And I'm like, yeah. what? That the the executive producer, he wants to put his girlfriend in the role. And because you're not signed and, you know, they, they said, we can't believe that this is happening to you. So basically, I said, okay, and I'm like thinking, well, okay, just calm down, Leslie. Like, I'm sure I'll finish the week out, right? I said, okay, well, I'm, what, I'm done tomorrow? Oh, no, they're going to put her in tomorrow. She's already learned your line. She'll be, I'm like, oh, my God. So (laughs) everybody called me, even Jack Wagner, the star, because it was like a college, it was a summer thing, whatever. I was playing, I was playing a college student, even though I was like, you know, 29. I looked, always looked 10 years younger. Mm-hmm. He got on the phone. I can't believe they did this to you. Oh my God. You know, like, I was like, yeah. So that's the, yeah. So that's the business. You know, that's the, that's the reality of the business sometimes, you know, yep. like, you know, it's just, uh, How- sometimes it is who you know or who you're sleeping with, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that casting couch thing, you know, really is reality, man. Yep. So that that one hurt. That one hurt. But guess what? Guess what? Oh. Uh, about six, to, uh, seven months later, the whole entire uh, 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 soap opera got canceled. Yeah. Santa Barbara was completely canceled. So I was like, hmm, a little payback. But, you know, anyway, it was like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> how was guest staring on T.J. Hooker? You know what? Oh, my God. That was fun, you know, working with uh, you know, Star Trek. Yeah. Yes, William Shatner. What a great guy. I mean, he's just like wisdom, wisdom, you know, he's like but, uh, you know, um, 
what's her name? Uh, she was like, so Monday we show up and she's like, she was dating um, Heather the Lock- guy for the rock star. Heather, Heather Lockyer. Lockyer. Yeah. She had just started dating that rock star. What's the drummer? Uh, Tommy from, Lee. Uh, Tommy Lee, yeah. And she was like, late. She was like, we were supposed to start shooting and it was like, she's like, three hours late. I go, so I said to him, where's where's Heather Locklear? He goes, you know what? He goes, that's really none of your business. That's between her and the, the producers. I shut my mouth, man. <laughs> but yeah, she was, uh, you know, pretty late. You know, it's like so. But, you know, I, the stars can be late. You know, the guest, you guest stars, you better be on time, man. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you're never, you can never be late. No way, man. But Another- uh, yeah, she, Another one of Jim's actors is in that episode, Carrie Emerson, who was in Chopping Mall. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> gosh, oh my gosh. You know, is Jim still, is he still um, directing? And Yeah, he's doing family movies now. Really? Yeah, all his contemporaries, you know, after the, the VHS craze fizzled out, they all went to uh, family comedies and made-for-TV women's movies. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I would love to get a hold of him, you know. I mean, just thank him, and maybe he could help me get some of the films that, you know, that I did, you know, the body chemistry. He's, on, he's on Facebook. He's not hard to find. <laughs> yeah, he, you know what, on MySpace, remember when that first started? Yeah. He found me. Hi, Leslie, it's Jim Minorsky. Remember me? I was yeah. the director. You worked for me. Are you still acting? I'm like, no, I'm, I was producing something at that time. And I'm like, no, I'm doing this, and he was so nice. But, you know, I didn't worry because I had all my all my work, you know, but but I wonder if he could maybe help me. But well, so far, David and I found a time to revenge and bought that. And yeah. then we watched for free the assault. And my dad figured out how to download some stuff off of uh, off of uh, YouTube and right. save it to his email. So maybe we could uh, print that up, he said. So, yeah, but uh Man, we looked forever that you said another chance. I had that great line, man. We went through the whole movie. Maybe we missed it somehow. He goes, or maybe it got cut out. But I'm like, well, why would Tommy send me the link and then have that line you said with the cop? You know, where I said, oh, no, that was another movie that we can't bring up, remember? Oh, God. Okay. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm at the wrong movie. Okay. Well. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, yeah. I, you know, I would download that just for myself. I just, you know, for personal viewing. Right. It's, it's the worst thing ever, but everybody said, but you were the best thing in it. It's just, but you, yeah, anyways, whatever. So <laughs> so tell me about something about Ken you were going to tell me about. Oh, I told you already about that he thought you were Bobby Block. <laughs> oh, my God, that's right. Oh, he forgot. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, I'm going to tag so, him in this. He'll be educated, don't worry. <laughs> I wonder if he's still with his wife because he's his wife was a dancer and we used to st- take dance classes at Jeremiah's, Jeremiah Studios together mm-hmm. and she was an awesome dancer man she could dance her butt off but she wasn't in the industry she she I think they married had kids um, I hope they're still together but anyway yeah, yeah. is he still acting um, here and there yeah really still yeah well he was a good looking guy did he um, you know. Yeah, so maybe he held his own, and men just, you know, they get distinguished. You men, yeah. us women, we just get old. Now, uh, yeah, yeah. No, so. you still look good. You still do. Oh, my God, you're so sweet. Thank you. No, that was the, one yeah. of the big reasons when I hit my 40s. I did one more movie, a couple commercials, and I was like, you know what? I don't have the money to do injections, Botox, fillers, this, that. You know, look at Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton's actually kind of kept some of her age, but you look at, like, Jane Fonda. My dad's like, she's my age. I mean, she she (laughs) nothing moves on her face. She's. I haven't seen 80 for Brady, but I really want to see it. But half those women have done everything, you know. It's like, you know. But, uh, no, I didn't really want to have to, like, struggle, you know, to try to fight against... um, you know that you know because I I'm not I'm not the character actress. I would have to be struggling against the you know the the prettier looking type girls, and right. it does matter what you look like on screen. You know, and I don't know. It was just it was getting harder, so I decided to go a different direction, well, and I kind of yeah. So I started a nonprofit and then a, uh, um, producing some stuff. And, but anyway, I'm just I'm back to being here and being retired and being with my family. And I want to help them right now because they're getting older, and and so that's what I'm doing. So awesome. 
awesome. But we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there slowly. But first, I want. I'm curious. Like, not, you don't remember anything you told me from Night of the Creeps? You know what? I just got a damn residual. I was talking about it with my dad. Like, you know, I can't remember what the hell I did. And that was one of the first things. I think it was 20th Century Fox. Mm -hmm. I know that like there's it was like horror. And it's I think, like our don't, Oh, is it Tristar? Yeah. There's like. I get constant residuals for it. I got something for five dollars and ten cents total. That's that's a, a, a growth. Uh, okay, I don't know net growth was something more, but like it it was bought like five or six times for a dollar something, a dollar here, a dollar mm -hmm. there. I I mean this that's one of the first things I did. I I don't even think I had more than one line or yeah. I I I, can, I gotta try to find that thing, but like. I've got the residual right now, you know, to, 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 they, they batched them together. So I've got, you know, I've got to, make, I always have to make, man, social security boy, they don't care how small the check is. They want to know every penny I make. So I've copied and I send copies in for that. But, um, yeah, I, I, I just got a, like these residuals from night of the creeps. I guess people still rent that thing. Oh yeah. So it's a great I'd be movie. curious to see. Is it a good movie? Have you seen it? I've I've seen it more times than I care to admit since I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? How can I see that one? Is that free V T V? You know about that? Would it be on that? I don't know, but it's on Blu-ray. It's on Blu-ray. Oh yeah. So so Blu-ray would be like cable, or do you have to have a? a, a... Uh, no, it's a DVD. A DVD. Well, my dad's got yeah. a DVD. He said, don't worry, I got a DVD player. Yeah. Oh, it's a cult classic. I mean, everyone involved does the horror conventions from this movie. Oh. I've met <laughs> I've met Tom I've met Tom Atkins. I've interviewed Jill Whitlow a couple times and Steve Marshall. In fact, I interviewed Steve Marshall a month after you first rejected me <laughs> because <laughs> I DM'd Sorry. him. I DM'd him months months before that, right? And I and right. I and I thought you were going to be my last resort, but I, I got the interview with him, but I still wanted to talk to you, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. <God. laughs> I want to see that. I I got to see what I did in it. I don't remember. It was so. You're a sorority young. girl with a hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just like this movie I did with um, um, uh, 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 Elizabeth Montgomery, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the interview, I kid you not, is like the audition piece is you wake up from a coma after like 30 years, all right? Mm -hmm. So the scene is you coming out of the coma, all right? And you, they tell you you've come out of a coma and have been in a coma, and it's a full-on like hysterical, like you're, I'm alive, I survived, seeing everybody. Oh shoot! What is? Okay. Hello, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, seeing everybody for the first time, and you're like, I forget what some of the dialogue is, but it's a full-on breakdown hysterical scene okay mm -hmm. which now you know these are not easy scenes to do man when you gotta get prepared you got you know you're sitting in the waiting room with other actors you know that are like talking about all their newest stuff they just did mm -hmm. everybody's trying to psych each other out you know what i mean yeah. the <laughs> they want the job so bad you know oh oh i just did a pilot for with you know so and so and oh me 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 and you're just like sitting there but anyway i went in there man i kicked ass i did it and I'm thinking that's going to be the, the part, right? Yeah. I get there. I'm in the scene with Elizabeth Montgomery. It's in a library. And she's looking at a book about sex because mm -hmm. she uh, obviously hasn't had sex in 30 years. Yeah. So she's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just the girl that works at the library, and I walk by. She looks at me, and we say we exchange, like like a moment of hello. And I look down, and I say, "Oh, the pictures are good too." And then she kind of giggles and giggles, and that's my part. Nice. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, okay. So I had to audition with her part with the hardest scene possible ever in your life to do you know like emotionally okay you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to be able to say to elizabeth montgomery uh oh and the pictures are great too that's it you know like are you really going to use that for your real well i guess 
but you know, I guess just getting to work with her was like, you know, is a big deal to them. So they want to make sure, just want to make sure you can even act. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) But I'm just telling you, like that's like that's like the kind of stuff they put you through, you know. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, like when David and I watch The Office, I'm like, oh my god, look at these guest starring people. He's it, you know. That's so and so from Breaking Bad. That's so and so from this. Like everybody is a somebody. Or like when we watch The Big Bang Theory, everybody that's guest stars, they're all somebody for, that are that have made it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's this young, these young couple of this one young girl with short black hair. My dad's like, oh well, don't you know who she is? She's a famous comedian. She's got this show with this other girl who's a comedian, and they do this and this and this. Like like they don't just hire like trying to get a guest star part anymore these days. No, you've got to have like. Like it already going on. Like mm-hmm. you've got to, you know, and it's, you know what I mean? Like just for a guest, just for a guest spot, you know, it's like, it's like, man, it's like, it's, it's, uh, and it, I look at what the actors have to go through. My niece tr- would try to make it for a while and she's just like, it's way too hard. Like, you know, it's, you know, with, with having to put yourself out there and create a name and create numbers on you know online and create uh, a personality and get get you know get uh followers 15 million or billion followers right. you know? david's nephew great nephew um he became a tiktok like sensation He's still in high school mm-hmm. he created his own look his hairstyle this and he do these crazy little videos to the point where he got out of high school and he started getting contacted by Old Navy and this company and that company to wear their clothes, and they would pay him. Then he got con- con- contacted by a uh, uh, a manager mm. that wanted to sign him and take him to California and put him in a house with four or five other up-and-coming new models that they were going to mold mm-hmm. and sign them. And, like, the mother and, and the grandmother were freaking out. They knew I was in the industry, so they talked to me about it. But they said that the manager was going to sign it with Wilhelmina. And I'm like, well, well, that's a good sign. So um, so they went ahead and did it, but they were so nervous because, you know, I said, don't give them, don't give them the percentage of the TikTok because the managers want to take everything, okay? Yeah. They want... They want your commercials. They want your, whatever you're already making. They want twenty percent of. Oh yeah. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Gage built that himself. Like, no, that's what I was told. No, let he can get whatever he gets himself for him. But anyway, Gage went and he ended up on the side of a huge building on Sunset. But Gage could not stand L.A. He moved back here, started going to auditions there. Now he's like, eh. You know, they just, it's a different world. They just, if they want you, they just look up your photos online or you don't have to really go to auditions with your headshot or yep. your this. Yeah. And he's moved with his girlfriend. He's, he's now, that was, he was 19. Now he's almost 24, 25 with his girlfriend to Seattle. I go, so is he still doing his work? No. You know what he's doing? Uh-huh. He's letting his girlfriend work. Guess what she does? Guess how she makes her money? They're making big money. Big time money. Guess how they're doing it? She has her. <laughs> no, no. She plays video games. People. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me about her. that. Yeah. <laughs> People. Yeah, they pay to watch her. Big money subscriptions to watch her play video games. She screams. She yells. She's like, she's fully into it, like acting out the like the watch playing the game. Yeah. And Gage is just kicking back. Just they're just living off that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, it is a different world, man. I'm like, God. it so, really is. But um, how was that? Um, well, how was guest starring on Charles in Charge? You know what? Oh God, okay, I don't even know if I should say. Oh, um, I think I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I he was on the callback, and he was, yeah. you know, you know, uh, he liked me, and you know, it's like I could kind of tell it like he liked the way I looked, you know. And I did a good job on the audition, and I got the role, and I was like, great. So then he comes in to where the hair dress, hair, their hairstyling, and they're crimping my hair, or whatever. And he's like, ew. What did they do to your hair? He turns around and walks out. And I'm like, okay, great. I have to, like, kiss this guy. I have to come in. Oh, duh. you know, and put my arms around him and kiss him and, you know, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
I'm like, okay, well, this is going well, right? So then we're behind the door where you come in. It's just this little square little, like, three of us are squished. Him and his buddy, his, I forgot his name. And so um, they're standing Holy behind age. there. Yeah, they're standing behind there, and he lifts up this, like, picture frame yeah. to have a show all the names of the guest stars of the girls mm-hmm. and talking about how he's, mm, you know what, every yeah. single one of them, okay? And, like, am I going to be putting your name on the list? And I'm just like, what? You know what I mean? <clears throat> no, mm-hmm. I said. I mean, like, okay, this is before we're getting, the scene's getting ready to happen on the day of shooting, okay? Oh, and mind you, the whole time, like, when we were supposed to know all of our lines, the day of the lines, memorized, he didn't know any. They're like, come on, like, you know, yeah. like, come on, get your shit together, they're saying, like, you're supposed to know your lines, okay? Like, they're all just like, <sighs> just like, like, you could tell they just put up with, like, such baby immature bullshit but they have to because he's who he is yeah. you know what I mean and everybody's just like just whispering crap behind his back. and I'm just like oh my god I just want to be done with this and they're like excuse me here's another thing they're doing they're like okay like letting out gas like okay for a better word farting okay yeah. <laughs> right in front of me okay like okay yeah. this is disgusting I know we're in our, our early 20s okay but like it's gross and it's like I don't even want to go out and have to kiss this guy I'm just to throw my arms around his neck and it oh Charles <laughs> I know and I'm like you know I know he's not going to get to have sex with me and but I just could not wait to get over and done with this job so okay hopefully he'll never hear this interview <laughs> Oh, but if, you know that's the truth of the matter. But you know what? I got to put a good credit on my, my thing and whatever. So there you go. But uh, anyway, yeah. So, but I ended up going to a party at his house. But about maybe five or eight years later, he didn't remember me. But uh, mm-hmm. I was there, and Pamela Anderson was there. He was dating her. Right. And there was a huge, big poster. David doesn't even know who it is. I go Vargas. So didn't you remember in Playboy magazines they had this guy that was he drew he was he was known his name was Vargas and he would paint the sculpture of the of like a, a of a naked woman and it was called Vargas he was uh-huh. a famous artist and they were they always had a picture of a of his, of his in Playboy magazines and uh, anyway he did a picture of of a huge tall I mean. Man, the damn thing was from the ceiling to the floor of Pamela Anderson, you know, with her boobs. And, you know, I, I think her coochie was covered yeah. with something. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so she was talking about how, um, you know, I was there and I was just kind of keeping to myself. I was with a girlfriend of mine and uh, she was talking about how uh, the Playboy, uh, uh, who's the owner? What's his name? I can't even think of him. He's dead now. Um, the owner of Playboy magazine. Oh, Hugh, Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner, yeah. Hugh Hefner told her if she she had to get her boobs done, he said for a third time they had to be like triple Fs or whatever, yeah. and he would make, he would make her, um, you know, the uh, the centerfold for the year or whatever they call it, the uh, the playmate you know, of they, the year. Playmate of the year, yep. And mm-hmm. so she she literally had her boobs done like three times. So th- and that's what he wanted. And he literally told her if she would do it a third time, he would make. And she, I heard her tell somebody that. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like this industry, like you know, like I was so like grateful. Like I was not looked like that. I was lo- not looked upon like that. And Jim didn't treat me that way because I was your girl next door type. You know, yeah. I wasn't really your. Bucks and blood, you know. You saw. Look at me on TV. I, that's, oh, yeah. I mean, that's just not. You look you know, like you more... look like a young Karen Allen. Oh my God! People said that to me all the time. Well, it's true. I mean, those 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 eyebrows, that hair, the everything. I mean, you look. You were a knockout. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. And you know, I was. And people used to say I look like the Mork and Mindy girl too. The, oh, Pam Dauber, yeah. Pam Dauber, yeah. yeah. Like that type of that style. And so I didn't have to deal with. The only person that ever treated me with disrespect was the was whatever Charles in charge. I can't even think. Scott Baio. 
Scott Bayo. He's the only one. And he, luckily, when I went to his party, because I was nervous, uh-huh. I looked totally different. My hair was long and straight. Yeah. He just didn't remember working with me, and I said nothing to him. And of course, he was dating Pamela Anderson, so I, you know, I didn't have to worry about it. You know, but it was just kind of fun to like be there and like have him not remember. But you know, I didn't want to bring it up. Okay, but no, he was just. You know, whatever, but that's the only worst experience I've ever had. I have never been approached uh, for the, the uh, you know, casting couch situation. Everything I got was through hard work, through auditioning process, through, you know, mm-hmm. through just, uh, you know, getting it on my talent alone, and that's it. Or not getting it. There's a lot I didn't get as I went along, you know, too. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a hard, It's a, it takes a lot of self-esteem. It takes a lot of endurance to get through, you know, a lot of knockdowns and not getting, you know, and just picking yourself up and keeping going. And it's it's a hard business. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, wish it on anybody. (laughs) I mean, you know, I'm grateful, but like there were a lot of times that I was just like, you know, really, it was really disappointing. People didn't know, you know, and it was like, you know, it's like. If you have any self-esteem issues, man, it's it can really wear on you, you know, especially oh, yeah. if you don't get 13 jobs straight in a row. And then come to find out, you find out, like, like the directors and the producers already knew they were going to hire that one girl. But they have to go through the, the audition process anyway with the casting directors. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they see everybody and they get it narrowed down to the couple, but they already knew they were going to hire this one person. So like you, you know what I'm saying like yeah. you you did it for nothing anyway like you know so just like you know they knew like they auditioned people for the char the uh, don't talk to strangers but they already knew they were gonna use me mm-hmm. it's the same thing it's like so and people used to say oh we hated coming showing up to auditions for commercials when you would show up <laughs> uh, for a callback. Yeah, same thing. They'd be like, you'd show up and be like, oh, great. She's going to get the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, was wor- so, I was working on another chance. You know what? Um, another chance was like, my dad and I watched it, and I'm like, well, was that it? You know? <laughs> it's the opening. <laughs> my friend Jesse Vitt, he was an actor. He, oh, he and I are him. enemies, by the way. Oh, my God. He had a thing for me. He was older, and I was, yeah. like, not interested. But he did write me in the script as my name, Leslie, as Leslie, in the mm. opening scene. And it's basically a womanizer who, you know, has a you know a dream that he's, you know, uh, going to get a second chance, maybe, if he stops being a womanizer. But he's a womanizer through the whole thing. We kind of just watched the opening scene, which is me, in bed with him. But luckily, like... the the sheets like tucked into my bra so I, you know, I don't have to show my tits yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, it's a kind of a make out at first I'm like are you okay because he has this nightmare you know and it's not good he's being judged for his behavior he's like oh I'm okay and then we have like a, a, a kitchen scene where we're talking and I'm kind of like questioning about us he's trying to act like oh everything's great with us oh you know you're the one kind of thing and then a girl shows up in the driveway and it's like oh oh, oh gotta he's trying to seek me out the back door you know mm-hmm. and then uh my dad even said was that you in the car really because i get in this convertible and she and i the girl lock lock eyes and i give her this really dirty look and i i drive out like this speed out as fast as I can. He's like, did you really drive the car like that? I'm like, yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> so that was it. That was it for me. And and I, and I go, check it out. Let's check the credits. Like, you got your starring card numbers. You know, like, on the assault, how I, I show up as a single card. You know, that's yeah. a big deal. Like, where your car, your name is placed on the film. Like, the, the agents always negotiate for single card. Or, or, or maybe you'll be with the double card. Or guest star. Well, I didn't even make guest star. I was on featured, featured, and I was the last name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look, Dad, I'm on the last name. You know? But uh, yeah, so anyway, but that, I was in like just that opening at the table, and then see you later. And then we thought that scene in the movie that we don't want to talk about. Uh-huh. We thought that we thought what you said. I, that was the funny. Well, you were great for what it's worth, but that one line. Yes, yes. Was, we thought that was in that movie. So Dad and I just scrolled through the whole movie, like 
fast forwarding through it, yeah. trying to find it, and we never found it. So yeah, we 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 knew it was going to be a stupid ass movie. So we're like, now nah, this we already it was so predictable. We knew what you know it was just girl after girl after girl after girl. You know. I've talked to, I've and, talked to Vanessa Angel and Jeff East, good people. Oh, have you? Yeah, she's pretty Vanessa. Yeah, she was a pretty. I I thought she went on to do some other things. Oh yeah, and that Jeff. Uh huh. And Jeff East. Like, uh, yeah, Jeff, and he he did some stuff too, didn't he? Oh, he was in Superman. He was Huckleberry Finn in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, I knew lot. it. I'm like that. Guy, I've seen him in a lot of stuff after that. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of people I worked with did do some some stuff. Even like you said, the Gimme an F. There were a lot of people that went on to do stuff. So well, I'm so okay. neat to hear that Ken Olin is okay and he's still acting. I can't believe it. He's got to be. My, like in his sixties, but you know what? Mm-hmm. You know, men can hold their. You know, look at look at. Uh, 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 oh gosh, the best, sexiest man alive right now. What is his name? I have no idea. I'm out of the I loop with that. Know. Oh, oh yeah, we don't do a list actors anyway. Yeah, he was in Ocean's Eleven. And all, he married. He just finally got married and had twins with that that uh, lawyer girl or whatever. George Clooney. George Clooney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's like. The, the, you know, getting he's starting to like l- allow his gray to show. Dave yeah. and I just watched that Paradise in Paradise or whatever because we wanted to see. They shot it all through. Uh, not terror in Paradise. <laughs> not terror. Oh God, that was like. Oh, you don't even want to know. Okay. Yeah, I, I survived a coup. A coup went down. They tried to overthrow Cory Aquino, and I'm in in the hotel when they bombed the palace, and me and the co actor about flew up. 15 feet in the room because the director's like we're not going to the set today because there's a coup and we thought it was the, the the second unit director throwing a coup over him because he didn't know what he was doing as a director he was an executive producer and this was his first film and he knew nothing about directing and we all knew it and so we didn't know it was a real coup and uh yeah that was crazy i was trapped in a a basement for seven day, eight days, mm-hmm. and like, oh, it was scary as hell, man. They're like, Leslie, you have a telephone call from the embassy. I'm in the basement, and it's like, hi, we've got your dad on the phone. I'm like, what? And they turn the phones like opposite ways, and I can hear my dad. Leslie, I'm like, dad. You know? Oh my god, would you hear like like a family member, and you're like in another country, mm-hmm. like. Then you realize, like, oh, my God, like, you know, I didn't know what to say, but just, I love you, just, and they're like, what do you want us to tell him? Just tell him I love him. I'm like, well, what's going on? What's well, We're on the offense. We're coming in. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah. great. Yeah, that was scary. And there was, like, some um, some military guys that were there, just happened to be there. They were also trapped. They had their uh, their cameras and equipment set up at the, you know, at the windows, filming everything and there were like you know all kinds of military guys at our pools inside our buildings they you know they lied the direct they lied and said there wasn't and there were and now we were uh, watching because they sent video footage they these military guys edited a bunch of footage Mm -hmm. that they took of all of us and everything that was going on and edited it into a song and made a video of just another day and you and me in paradise Bill Collins, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, which uh, that got left in L.A. Uh, that's another story. I'm trying to get, trying to get that through some friends of mine that were in the movie. But um, there's like you know a tank, and this guy is like waving a white flag. He's huh. waving the flag like I'm you know surrendering, and they just keep shooting and shooting and shooting at him, and they kill him. I mean, I see that, and then when they finally decide to. The, to let us out, women in columns, like women and men and children first, and we're getting on the first bus. This one guy who had been like the baby, just like he's all, like this guy, all right, this man, and he's the one crying and whimpering the whole time. He's just like he gets out of line and a sniper shoots him. I swear he's four feet away from him, mm-hmm. and I see the bullet get shot right in his arm, the blood spurt, and they said, that's it. Nobody gets to go, and they send us all back in. And we have to sit, and we have to. They have one key to open up the, every door of the hotel room, and mm. we're told to sleep in the bathtub. I mean, it just was like, oh my god! I, yeah. I just was like, 
Yeah, and I didn't realize the PTSD that I had until we finally got out of there and stayed in another hotel. And I was having dreams that they were trying to come in through the door. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> Yeah. No, every the, the main actor that he was in that movie Jerry um, Lockwood. Uh, yeah, he quit. He left. Yeah. So he was <laughs> so in the movie that he like he like is like the bad guy and he like goes and gets like um uh, plastic surgery mm-hmm. on this island. So the, he done most of the movie, but the part where he gets the plastic surgery, all they did was hired like this extra guy, mm-hmm. taped his face and they just said, "Okay, walk from here to that this x over here and count from one to ten and and just move your mouth and then they just edit in edit in a voiceover <laughs> <laughs> and with me i was ready i was leaving so i was like getting my plane ticket and trying to get out of town and, and i was talking to a lot of the local people and really the american sentiment they they weren't after the americans they weren't Mm-hmm. They, they were just upset with the, with the Korea. You know, you, you got high, high poverty, um, extreme poverty, and extreme wealth, and no middle class. And it, it's just horrible what what I saw in Manila. You know, just uh, oh my god. But anyway, I the director. I said I'm done. I'm I'm quitting. Well, I'm like the main actress, so he offered me another ten grand, and which is what I should have made extra for that yeah. movie. Uh, you know, and uh, I stayed, and it took me three months to get home. I got home. The last day we shot, they said if we, sh- if everybody's willing to shoot twenty four hours straight, we can get you home Christmas Eve. Oh. And so, yeah, I got a, a eighteen hour, twenty hour flight. You know, of course we could drink and smoke on the plane back in those days. Oh yeah. So I did. <laughs> I did enough of that. I don't do that anymore today, but I did that enough of that and got home on Christmas Eve. And mm-hmm. holy cow, man, that was just like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was intense stuff. So, but um, anyway, so I survived that, and that was that was interesting. But you know what? I shot in some beautiful places. Mm-hmm. I shot right where they shot a, a Apocalypse Now with oh, the yeah. waterfalls, and I went into a real bat cave. Yeah. A real down in is you know, we shined our lights and the bats were all like swirling around and their red eyes and they started coming at us. We ran out of there. It was like, you know, so yeah, I, I saw some beautiful country, but I also saw some stuff. I made the guys would go out to the red light district every night, so I made them take me because I was the only girl. I was like alone every night, so mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, I didn't see. You know, I saw young girls. You know, being you know taken advantage. Of. They 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 kind of have them on a dance stage they're 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 wearing bathing suits with a number on them and right you know the guys call it's called a bar fine and they sit down at the bar and they say okay number one or 16 or they come and sit at the bar and they the bar fine is like three drinks or two drinks and they buy that at the bar and then the girls so sweet and they all look like they're 15 you know and then they go back to the room with them whatever happens after that is between the girl and the guy and you know but uh you know, the, the the sound guy was, like, you know, making fun that he'd only given the girl $5, you know, yeah. and I was so, I was so mad, yeah. you know, that just hurt me, and, you know, and, to, and, you know, we were walking down the street, and the kids coming at you for money, and then we, there was a jackhammer, it's like eight, nine o'clock at night, there's a jackhammer going, and there's a woman laying on the top of a car with two little babies, like, they, maybe, not babies, but, like, I don't know, seven and eight or, and they're all, they're sleeping on the hood of a car with like a jackhammer, like not even, you know, 20 feet away working. Mm -hmm. And they're having, that's where they had to sleep. I mean, it it was, you know, it was, it was not fun. (laughs) What I had to see there, the poverty, it, it, what goes on in certain parts of the world, you know, and then we see how much we have here and how much waste there is. It's really, it's really upsetting to me. So, yeah. but anyway, enough of that, you know. So, tell me, yeah, tell me about Nine Seven Six Evil Two because I love this movie. Oh, oh my god! But you know what? I just think it's so cool. Like that, there was no CGI back in those days. Right. Now they kill me, and they like zap me into It's a Wonderful Life, the yeah. actual movie. And I and really look like I'm dead. in that movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm in that movie, and then all of a sudden she's holding the little girl and she's pointing to the angel. Then boom, they did dress everybody up as in, char- as in character though for that. Here, here's, they, the, that here's, here's the part yeah. where they eat people's guts, which reminds me, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> 
you knucklehead. Oh God, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten yet either. Oh my God. But yeah, then all of a sudden everybody turns around in the movie and they're they they look like yeah those the dead people. Not and they're all coming at me and wobble. You know they like wobble. And then that little girl's coming at me like that famous scene where she yeah. kills the mom with the with the uh, the the what is that thing a garden hoe or whatever yeah and uh, and I I go slamming up against the wall and the hands the famous scenes where the hands are like slamming through the doors and the yeah. walls <laughs> and she, I'm screaming and I'm like how do they do this and they and they like I'm the next thing she's like chopping you know, like you know, slamming my chest with that thing and then it's like. Then that, then they cut and it's just in my chest and they pour chocolate syrup all over me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is what blood is. It's chocolate syrup. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, that's how yeah. But when you really watch it, it really looks like I'm really in those movies. Yeah, it's really, it's it's, it's, At, it's brilliantly done, isn't it? For yeah. for a time when there was no CGI and there was no. Yeah, so yeah, that was kind of a <laughs> that was kind of fun. I think that was a Jim Wynorski movie too. Yes, it is, and um, yeah. I, I, in fact, I asked Jim. I said, uh, you know, what 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 was Robert what was Robert England's reaction to the movie because he made the first one, and he said he egged my house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was joking or not, but possible. I don't know. I've met Robert. He's a sweet guy. I can't imagine him doing that. <laughs> I can't imagine. Oh my god. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, you know, like I, you know, I am grateful to Jim. I know you said some people, you know, didn't care for him, but you know, he's always good to me, very nice to me. You know, um, I never had a problem with him. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I never. No, I just, I was, I'm very grateful. Like he was because I saw, I saw on the set where he wasn't to some people, and you know, I was like, oh my god, like you know, just stay on the good side with him. You know, oh, just yeah. I just. Made sure I knew my lines on time, you know, be where I'm supposed to be, do what I'm supposed to do, and that was it. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah. <laughs> just like you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah, so that's it. So Yeah, I, I love know. I love that Mary with Children episode you were on. <laughs> oh, my God, I loved working on with him. I loved, uh, you know his name. Hello, Neil. Oh my God, was he fun? Yeah, he was so funny, and I couldn't believe I booked that job because I'm, I, I'm, I was like thirty years old, yeah. and the two girls I worked with were nineteen. Yeah, you can pass yeah, for nineteen. And, and I was, I that's what they again. They gave me the lines, and like we're like. When he's like looks through that peephole, and mm. we're like on the other side of it, and we're supposed to like you know, and I like I flashed my opened up. I I have my like bra and underwear on, but yeah. like I just played played with him, and I opened my towel just to, just yep. to uh, shock him. Wow, there was a live audience, and he was like, "You got me so good." Afterwards, he's like, "You really got me." And yeah, but he was so much fun, so nice. And, you say and, uh, you say Grandpa got lost. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Man, I still get so many residual, like like little ones, you know. But I'll get the, the highest, gro- like grossing ones, like twenty dollars. Like they yeah. must play that thing constantly because I'm like still like <clears throat> getting like that one in Night of the Creeps, but mainly Married with Children the most, right. the most. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I guess they just just people must just still want to watch it, you know, just like Big Bang Theory. But but really, Married <laughs> with Children is old. That's like 30, 40, 50. That's 30 years old. Yeah, I love it. It holds up. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. It's just called the Old College Try. I remember that I see the name on the, the residuals. And I'm like, so it's still, yeah, still playing. So, Bo- but, uh, body, chemi- yeah. Bo- body Chemistry 4. You know what? I, I, I lost that one, too. That's, you know, and my girlfriend that lives here, um, her son is very wealthy, built a house up in McDonald Ranch overlooking um, um, Las Vegas, and uh, Gene Simmons bought their house. Yeah. And Shannon Tweets is, is and I'm, she was going to introduce me. I wanted to ask Shannon Tweets, can you get me a copy of the movie I was in with you? <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm like the, uh, a writer, and my wife, my husband's having an affair with her. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, needless to say, I have a lot of uh, screaming and yelling scenes at my husband. And in the end, I get to kill her with this shot-off shotgun. And they put me in this, like, like U-Haul truck. I mean, it was radical. I had, like, the ear, like, you know, uh, like, uh, 
they look like music ear muffs or mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, like the, the kickback on the gun was real. Like it was right. radical. Yeah, I kill her in the end. I think that was the last uh, series they did with her. They kill her. So, but uh, yeah, um, that was uh, that was a good movie. Um, I I it was another one of those ones where I had uh, you know Jim was insistent. I had to have a sex scene in it. I was like, you know, fighting with him back and forth. He wanted it this to start out a certain way. And I absolutely wouldn't do it. But then he had to have me. It had to be that I sat on top of him, and it was supposed to be. You know, I said only, only him and and the camera guy and the the uh, makeup girl on the set. Like mm-hmm. I was really like just freaked out, you know. So like, you know, I had to have my top off, you know. But he he shot my back, and I'm sorry, leaving my underwear on. So of course they tucked the sheet mm-hmm. <laughs> up under my on my underwear, which you can tell. So it looks really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I've had people say, oh, I've watched, seen that movie. You can really tell you're not into it, Leslie. You don't look like you're really into that sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> Jim had a certain way that he liked his sex scenes. But he, he wanted it to start off with, he's going to rub his hand up your like, side of your body. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and no, he's not going to be doing that, Jim. So I had to fight with him over and over with that. So I did get my way, but it's like, but you know what? It was a good part for me because I am through the whole movie and like, you know, I do get to kill Shannon. At the, she had a body double, like for because she shows like everything. It says full exposure. Yeah, that full exposure is her. Like they show her butt, everything, but because she was older, mm. she had a body double. So like the body double had like. You know, was the perfect butt and the perfect this. I was thinking the beginning days she did everything herself, but as she got older, it was somebody else showing all that stuff. But, but I was never uh, there on the days that she was, and she was. Ne- you know, we were just. Yeah. Most of my scenes were with my husband, who incidentally, the guy that played my husband, I did a few commercials with. <laughs> so, yeah. so we knew. So I was very comfortable with them at that. So that was like I felt co- like yay. I know him, like, to do the sex scene wasn't going to be so bad, you know. So, anyway, yeah, but that was kind of cool. I'd like to see that again. So, that's one I'd like to ask Jim if he could send me, or, I don't know, maybe I could, yeah. Larry Poindexter played your husband. Larry Poindexter, yes! We did a few commercials, I can't remember what commercials we did together, but we did two commercials together. Right. Yeah. Husband and wife with kids, I don't know, it was a cereal commercial or something, you know coffee creamer commercial or yeah. yeah i think it was like an international delight creamer commercial yeah we we worked it was not it's nice to work with people when you have to do something like that that you've already worked with because you know that brings a comfortability and because you know believe oh, yeah. it or not it, it, it's it is awkward you know people think oh sex scenes oh yeah yeah you're well you know if you don't you know you know it's <laughs> some people if, if you're mr and mrs like brad pitt and What's her name? You know, Brangelina. Right. You know, they, you know, obviously they ended up together after that movie. There was such chemistry. You know, she, he left his wife for her from that movie, you know. But like that, you know, that doesn't always, isn't always the case. A lot of times, if, I'm sure if you interview actresses and actors, they're, it's not always that comfortable. You yeah, know, it's no. kind of weird. You got everybody on the set <laughs> and everybody's looking at you. And like, like, I didn't want all those people on the set. And Jim did honor that for me. You know, because there's like a lot of people. The ones who come from uh, stripping and porn, they're comfortable with it. But like classically trained actresses, no, they they can't. No, I wasn't. And then you think about it, you got your lighting, your electrical, your, you know, your this person, that person, your grips, your this. Like, it's like it begins like to have like 15 people on the set watching you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's like you got to keep the uh, cinematographer. You, the director, and the the my makeup art, who I you always get close with. I always did. Yeah. I always got real comfortable with my makeup artists and hairstylists, and you know, and and that's it. It's like and the and my actor, I'm doing it with. Okay, and he said, okay, Leslie, okay. So there's four people on the set. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know you were in Pontiac Moon. Well. You know, my girlfriend was do, pr- helping produce on that, and she helped me get that part. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited. I had a line with, with 
hit dancing, my first A film. I got flown first class. You know, I got to stay in Seattle in a hotel, and like uh, we're shooting on this thing, and it's like a hippie. I don't know. I don't remember even remember what the movie's about but he's traveling through whatever and he stops mm-hmm. in this section it's a, a hippie like uh, camp and you know so I'm like a hippie girl with the round glasses and I don't know what my dialogue is but oh my god okay and I get to go to the cast and crew and I get a cast and crew jacket I still have it the cast and crew jacket with Pontiac Moon on it right mm-hmm. I see get to see the movie it gets to my part they cut to him when I take my line <laughs> then they cut to me I think at the end smiling and I'm like okay well they sure paid a hell of, they paid me like union like A-list line wages for it you know first class everything and I'm just like well okay well that was uh, I don't even you know know if that was even worth it I didn't get to use any of that for my tape and, you know so I don't know whatever it's just like that's what happened there so you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i mean it was fun to, to to be treated like like you know what i oh you know it was all the b films and everything that i did like jim uh, we always had you know our trailers and you know all that he treated his people good i mean we had you know we had you know every he followed the union rules you mm-hmm. know he did he did, you know, eight hours, anything after that, overtime, you know, time and a half, like all that. So he was, he didn't rip us off, you know, never. Uh-uh. The exactly. only one that is that movie we don't talk about. Yeah. Yeah, that one that I shouldn't have done, but I did it because I was trying to build tape, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I had a really good part in it, and I, you know, it's like, but anyway, whatever. So, but, but it's best not to do that because unions are important. They, they cover your ass, man. You know, mm-hmm. they protect you. Yeah. I got hurt really bad on a commercial that I was doing um, that was for Lean Cuisine. And there was, I'm supposed to run full speed and jump through a box. You know, the way that football players run and then they hit that thing and they come flying through the box onto the, you know, onto the, uh, to uh, the, uh, the grounds, you know, mm-hmm. they come flying through. Well, they had like that. It's cut like a pie and I come exploding through this huge lean cuisine box well it didn't open and it was it created like a shelf and i went head first into the tracks of where the camera was rolling in on me and everything was slow motion my nails popped off everything was like black and white and orange and i had a full concussion everybody screaming on the set like you could hear them scream and so then I, all I wanted to do was fall asleep. And, of course, I wanted to finish the commercial. It was a network national commercial. Mm-hmm. So they brought a doctor on the set, and they kept me up for two or three hours and said, can you finish it? Because, you know, there's no way I'm going to – if I sued them, I would have never worked again. Right. And, and so I did the best, and I finished that commercial. But I had, I had a full-on concussion. And, you know, it's like they told me they would pay for me to go to the doctors and everything the next day and everything. And when it came to it, they didn't. They wouldn't sign anything. They wouldn't pay for me to go to the doctor because then that's admitting that that they didn't have a safe set or maybe I'd possibly sue them or, you know, so. But I made a lot of money on it. But, yeah, I did get hurt real bad. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But I was amazed when I show people the commercial. I'm like, see right there? That's I had a full on concussion right going on, right? That's mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. I don't know. Sometimes you know the power of the mind can pass push through, right? You know. Yeah. Or the power of the dollar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make that money, you know. Mm-hmm. You played a hostess and covered me. Hostess in Cover Me. Rick, Cover Me? Rick Rossovich, Corbin Birdson, Elliot Gould. What the hell? I don't remember. That's okay. You don't have to remember it. I've never seen it, so. <laughs> you know, it's so, I'm still trying to figure out Born Champion. Last night we were trying so hard to find yeah. it. I'm like in with, what's her name from The Office and this other guy. I'm like, I want to find that because I'm like, I vaguely remember. I'm like, I know what I, I know I was in it. And I'm like, but I can't quite remember. And I think that was the last movie I did. Yeah, Grizzly but Adams I, is in it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what? I know, but it's like, 
it's just been so long. It's like been 25 years. That would have been like the last thing I did, like 1998 or 99 or 2000, something like that. Right. I don't know. I, it, I don't. I, yeah, the assault. I kind of somewhat remember being like this gang after me and all this stuff. But, but it yeah. was yeah. It was like wow. I didn't remember all the different scenes until I watched it last night. I was like, oh my god, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell me about your nonprofit group. Well, um, I did start a nonprofit that I was going to be helping orphanages, which I did do some or raise some money for some orphanages to help. Um, you know, orphanages in Africa Aww. and uh, and just, just, just any orphanages at that point it became, you know. So um, I, I wanted to do, to do that uh, and, and work with my friend um, at the Guitar Center and work with music and, you know, you know, try to raise money through, you know, like music show, music concert type things. Right. And, um, you know, that kind of stuff because he was somebody that was con- really connected to that and but, uh, you know, it didn't all work out that well because I got sick, uh, he got sick, he's got Alzheimer's, he's out here now, and just uh, some things happened, and so I ended up having to kind of let my house go. My dad came and got me, and we moved me back here, and I had to sort of start over and get get better men- you know, health-wise, and, and he's mm-hmm. still sick, and so th- I had to shut it down because you can't really run, like, a nonprofit when half your board half your board is in like California and then like you know my main person has got Alzheimer's and you know it's just I had to shut it down so yeah. I just sent what the rest of the money to this one particular um, orphanage that I was helping to them so I didn't raise that much money I probably donated about three to five thousand dollars that's about it nice. but you know I still try to help if there's something I li- like I'd like to send some money to that Sudan situation that's going on right now or mm-hmm. you know little bits wherever I can help I really love um um uh with the kids St. Jude's like whenever it's my birthday mm-hmm. I try to like you know, uh, on Facebook, I try to raise money, you know, you know, they use that as like, if you want to send a gift, like, and they, it's usually like $250, they'll put like a GoFundMe and people, you know, usually people donate to that or I'll send something to that. I just, I don't know. I, I want to try to do what I can to help. I don't feel that I'll ever be able to start a nonprofit here. I don't know enough people really to create, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, I, you know, you have to like, get your 501c3 and that has to be yeah. approved you have to have a lawyer you have to i don't know that everybody out here like I, I lived in la for 33 years and i had developed a lot of contacts and a lot of you know and i don't really have that here you know mm-hmm. so um you know i could go and help and be of service to an organization perhaps you know i've thought about that but right now now i just want to be available to my stepdad who we just lost my mom a couple of years ago mm-hmm. he needs a lot of help he uh physical therapy things like that he's on a walker there's you know a lot going on with the house that needs to be attended to my dad's 84 now he's his health is good but like he needs help too like you know like yeah. i need so, like, maybe just being of service to my family. David's dad's 84 now, too. So, you know, it's like uh, family first, as they say. And then, like, you know, what other, there's other things that, you know, I try to be of service to to help people where I can. So that's what makes me feel the best is helping others. Oh, you know, wow. I think it's out of the giving that we get. So that's, that's kind of what my motto is. So, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm trying to, you know, play my play my bass again. Although I had a trigger finger with my thumb, and that's kind of um, stopped that little process. My dad's been giving me lessons again. I learned real fast to play on a worship team that went to uh, to um, uh, Berlin and t- to a, um, a children's um, conference. And we worked with kids, and I played in the worship team, and I taught them dance stuff, and we did comedy skits in in german and in english Mm. (laughs) and it was fun and you know and uh i really liked playing the bass and i thought you know what my sister's getting ready to move back east to philadelphia or pennsylvania 
And I thought, you know what, she's been playing her 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 uh, piano again. My dad's been teaching her again, and she she can play a little lot better than me. She's like she's got jazz stuff going. And yeah. but my dad wrote her a couple of blues songs, and I know I can play blues. Forget the jazz, just forget it. Okay, that's just way over my head. But like worship songs are like blues, and I'm like, you know, I want to spend time with my sister every week because in a year and a half she's going to be gone. And I'm like, so I thought if we could do that together and then, like, also see each other and spend time helping my stepdad with his house and, oh. you know, straightening things out there and, and just I need to spend time with her because then she's going to be gone. That'll be it. I'll be here alone. My bro- twin brother's back east. And I won't be alone. I'll have my dad and my fiance and his family, but just my immediate sister and brother. So that's my focus right now, you know, so... That is uh, I I just want to get back to doing that. So this trigger finger thing has been kind of a... It doesn't hurt. It's still popping. It's a weird... The weirdest ass thing you've ever seen. Oh, I... It's like the tip of your thumb snaps. I I got an issue with my thumb right now. I singed my my thumb on the toaster oven a couple weeks ago, right? And it created this big old callus that got irritated last week. So I just popped it open, drained it out. Now it's all scabbed. It hurts like hell. Yeah. Poor thing. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, yeah. you're like we need our hands, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so like yeah, this lady so I had to see a hand surgeon because uh, I was told I needed a cortisone cortisol shot or cortisone or whatever. So thirty one days to get the damn, you know, referral, then like twenty seven days to see her. She's like, You took a picture, not much arthritis. And she's like, Does this hurt? She pushed down on like the inside of my the lower base of my thumb, I about jumped out of my skin. Well, it's you know the, your your tendon runs from here all the way to your elbow. She had shot me up with this. Oh my god, I can't even begin to tell you the pain. It's like the longest, slowest shot ever. I get it. Into like, oh my god. Well, I have to wear this little type of cast type covering on my thumb at night. Yeah. And you know what? It doesn't really hurt that much. I've got this. Voltra, you know, steroid cream, but you know, it's like I, it'll get better. It'll get better. It's just, a, it's just a weird, snappy thing, you know. Yeah. But it's not hurting as bad, you know. So hopefully, I can get back to just playing my, you know, my bass because the right hand is what, you know, I strum with the the, the strings, and the, the left side I can play. But yeah, so we'll we'll get there, right? We'll get better. Your thumb will heal, mine will heal, and it will, it will. Know, I think it's just everybody's like, well, you're just getting older. I'm like, I don't want to hear that. Okay. Age, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, gosh, I've so enjoyed talking to you. You're just awesome. Oh, thank you so much. You're pretty good yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not as scary as I thought it was going to be. I don't know why I put it off for eighteen months. I don't know. You know, I don't like to focus on myself that much. I don't ever tell people what I've really done or what I do, or you know. Yeah. And they always say, "Why? Why don't you tell?" I just, I don't know. I've always been that way. I just. I don't know. I just, it's okay. I guess you should be proud of what you've done or what you've done in your life or, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, now, now's the time to do it because, you know, we're in this, this groundbreaking era of, of communication, you know, in the podcasting world, you know, get the stories out there because, you know, it's, because of the oversaturation of new content, people are forgetting that these movies existed, you know? I know. I didn't even think about that. It's like, how? Yeah, my dad's like, I want to find the video soul. I, mean, I was trying to tell him free V TV, like that. It's free. It's like we watched it last night for free. You know, mm-hmm. that's just so cool. So, you know, I'm sure I. I bet you I could find. I bet you we could even find Body Double Four or or whatever. Body, body Chemistry, chemistry Four. four. <laughs> I said body double, body chemistry for, and I want to find that born champion. I mean, I'll buy it. I don't care. I want. My dad's like, you should put your archive of collect catalog back together and have that. So you know, it's it's there for my great nephews and nieces, and you know, yeah, and the family, and, and just have it. You know. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to do that. I have a big. I have a. My grandmother recorded a lot of my commercials, so I have like. A CD of like tons and tons of my commercials. So love it. That's so and awesome. some of my t- some of my TV stuff, my guest starring stuff. Some of that, um, sh- my dad may still have on on VHS up in the, up in his uh, uh, ceiling or whatever you call that. The uh, whatever 
So, uh, so, what do you call that when you store stuff up in the, not the garage, but up in your ceiling? The attic? What is that? The basement? The attic! <laughs> oh my gosh, yay, you win, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes, the attic. He said, yeah, Grandma taped a lot of your stuff. So, I, I you know, because I had a lot of really good episodes on Santa Barbara. So I'd love to see those, and and I have like the 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 this this the Charles in charge. I have the uh, the Highway to Heaven. I have um, the uh, Young and the Restless stuff. You know, yeah. with with again with Ken Olin. Yeah, yeah. So I'm so glad to hear hear about him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Real quick, mm-hmm. let's play my secret silly yeah. game. Okay. This is a series of silly slumber party questions. No win or lose. It's just pure fun. And how the game works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me that exact same question and I answer it. And then feel free to come in on the answers because they might be funny. Okay. Leslie, are you ticklish? <laughs> yes. Are you ticklish? You want to know where? Oh, no, go I'm not going to tell you. You can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ticklish on my sides. Same here, same <laughs> on here. On my sides of my third. Are you ticklish on your sides? Yes. Yeah, if you tickled oh, me if you tickled me imagine? without warning, I might hit you in the groin though. <laughs> oh my gosh. My fiance's that way too. I'll like leave I'll be sleeping and I'll like put my hand over to just like hug him. Ah, he jumps almost he's so ticklish. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is your belly button an innie or an outie? It's an innie. I'm an innie. Is your belly button an innie or an outie? It's an innie. It's an innie. Yes. Oh my gosh, two things that were alike. Okay, what's next? What color are your toenails painted? Right now they are pink. They are fluorescent pink. That's my fiance's favorite color. Love it. Love I was it. told you always wear your hair and your to- toenail color the way that your fiance likes it. I agree. I agree. So what what color are your toenails? <laughs> right now they're not right now they're not painted. Last time they were, they were Easter egg blue green. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I've been painting my toenails since I was thirteen, by the way. Really? How funny. That's cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. What would you say is your best personality trait? Um you know what? My first has, it's compassion. Mm-hmm. Like compassion for others. Yeah, and, and uh, I have a giving. I think a giving spirit, a giving heart. You are. I, I give. I, I I think I sometimes to a fault. Sometimes mm-hmm. I overgive, and it, and it can be recognized as enabling, but it's just because I I care. Yeah, I totally. I do. It. Yeah, and what would be your your trait? Uh, your your trait. I have You're empathy, here. and I have no filter. <laughs> well, you you were a comedian. Yep. And I'm a Gemini. You know what? I'm going... And yeah, I'm a Gemini. Oh, my God. I'm a Gemini, too. Yep. June 6th, I am. Okay. May 28th. Nice. That's two days after my ex-girlfriend. She was May 26th. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. May 26th, wow, May 28th, yeah, I'm on the cusp, because isn't that almost a Taurus? I've um, always been told that, you're on the cusp, no, you're on the cusp. No, Taurus ends May 20th, and I was supposed to be born, like, May 18th, but I was two weeks overdue, but it's funny, I I have a lot of Taurus in me, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, mm-hmm. okay, no, go on. And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Uh, what's a stinky smell? Uh, God, what makes you smell? Well, I don't like sewers, I'll tell you that. Oh, I'm nobody just, likes sewers. <laughs> nobody likes sewers, but I'm trying to think of, is there like a food, like oysters or something? I used to love and I cannot stand at all now. It's the looks of them, the smells of them, anything. Yeah, I, I I don't know, but they don't really smell either. So, um, uh, I don't know. I've been trying to get myself to try sauerkraut, but I don't think I like the smell of it. And I don't like the way I'm it looks. To try to, <laughs> it look, doesn't look e- great either. Somebody told me it would really help with my digestion, and you know. But I've been finding peppermint tea is working fabulous, nice. and 
it yeah helps with digestion and con- and you know it, consistency if you know what I'm saying. And mm-hmm. I looked at uh, sprouts at the at the sauerkraut or whatever, and I was like, that looks gross. And uh, and it kind of smells weird. I see, and I know people like, oh, try a Reuben sandwich with sauerkraut, and I'm like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would have to say that that might be something I don't like. That you know. So yeah. How about you? What's your what's your thing that you would say you can't stand as far as smell wise? Either farts or feet. Ew, feet. Stinky feet. Yeah, I don't like stinky feet either. I don't smell them very often though. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> you're lucky. Yeah, my my honey's got good smelling feet, and I do too. I keep them clean, and yeah, and I don't care for stinky farts either. <laughs> oh, obviously, it's got Bayo. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Can you? Like, I hope he never hears this conversation. He won't. He won't. Yeah, he was so. Re- that was the worst experience mm. of my life. I thought, oh my God, how can these people have a series when they act like this? How in the world? Oh my God! If people only knew, I was just like I couldn't wait to get off that set. Bill, I r- Bill Cosby home. makes him look like a choir boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh my God! I know. You just wonder, like, oh my God, these people like treat people that way and act that way. And I have unbelievable. A, I have a joke for you. Yeah. What do you call a boy that doesn't masturbate? <laughs> you call a boy that doesn't masturbate uh, a transgender? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, good. I like a, that. A, a T-G-I-G, I say T-G-B-G-Q-I, Jack X-Y-Z. Uh, I don't even know what to call it anymore. A liar. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're right about that. <laughs> absolutely lying. <laughs> Leslie, thank you so much for Sorry. finally coming on and having this great conversation today. Oh my god, I had so much fun. You're so awesome. I hope I didn't take you too hostage and I answered enough of your questions. Oh no, you 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 answered uh many of them and then some, you know, I <laughs> When, when we talked on when we talked uh, privately last week, I, I knew what I was in for, and which is great because you know I'm not a morning person, but I'll get up early for you, and you know the, the coffee got me through the morning. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, I really had a much better time than I even anticipated. So this was thank quite you. a joy. Okay, thank so. you so much, Leslie. Have a great day. I will. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. Leslie Ryan, ain't she a sweetheart? What a great lady, a great conversation. You know, I, I I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, I, I talk to so many people who are skeptical about doing the show, and then when they do it, they they walk away happy doing it, you know, which is what, I, what I'm hoping for, you know. But, I mean, I thought she it was a great storyteller, and I enjoyed talking to her today. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.